All right, family, we're back in here finally. I hope you guys got your popcorn because it's about to get spicy. So, Michaela Montgomery, um, she's known as the Chick fil A girl. And I guess she got a fame because she hugged Trump or something around <laughs> Chick fil A ad or whatever. But uh, I have to call, I have to circle back around and see exactly who she is. But, however, uh, it's basically. Trump has to put up somebody or, they, or his team to combat Kamala Harris. So, shots to fire it and um, check this out. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage founder of Conserve the Culture, Michaela Montgomery. Hey, hey, bring the sister out. I'm so happy you all came out to see me. So, <laughs> my name is Michaela Montgomery. A lot of you guys know me as the girl from Chick-fil-A, but I am so much more than that. <laughs> Not only do I serve as the CEO of Conserve the Culture, I am also the state director for Blexit down here in Georgia. I'm a Fulton County coordinator for America First Works, and I'm also launching a podcast on the Patriots Prayer Network, so put some respect on my name. Now so you see the right a sister, sister, a sister, sister, to come out and speak, 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 speak on this, so... Yeah, I'm not going to stop it too much, guys. I just wanted to just pay. Hey, but look at the background, too. We got brothers and sisters back here as well, too, on the background. So, yeah. <laughs> Let's continue. Now, why don't we jump right into it? See, as a young single mother, I can tell y'all that rent is too damn high. Mm. I, I can tell you that as a young black voter, groceries are too damn high. Mm. And as an American citizen, period, seniors like my parents should never have to choose between medicine or food. It should never be the quality of life versus the quantity of life. And I don't want to hear, oh, but we capped the price of insulin and lowered the price of all these medicines. Yeah, but you raised the price of everything else, so it's about time to start telling the truth to Americans and let them know exactly what they're signing up for if they want to vote for Kamala Harris. We need to vote based on facts and not feelings. See, under Harris and Biden, the average Georgia household is losing $1,060 per month, and inflation is at 21.4%. And due to the war on energy, average gas prices have reached record highs for the state. We also did a poll, and 80% of us black Americans are not happy with the current state of the economy, so I'm going to need 80% of y'all to vote accordingly in November. They love me, they love me, they really love me. The left wants you to get in your feelings about things that have been said, but I want you guys to pay attention to what has been done. They don't want to talk policy. They just want to use propaganda to steal your vote. The left is trying to tout this woman as a savior for the black community, but all she's done is hurt the black community since she came into the game. See, the first step in destroying the black community is to dismantle the black family. So aside from her record as a prosecutor, why don't we ask Mrs. Willie Brown if Kamala Harris cares about black families? What? I wonder if Mrs. Willie Brown, a black woman, is also with her. A few days ago, President Trump said he didn't know Vice President Harris was a black woman. I'm trying to figure out what all the outrage is about because she's only black when it's time to get elected. Did I lie? 
The same black people who are mad at Trump for being confused about her race, ethnicity, nationality, whatever, are seemingly forgetting that while you're touting her as a savior for black people, she identifies as an Asian woman. She chose her side and it wasn't ours. When asked if she would ever do anything specifically for black people, she said no. Whereas Trump gave us the platinum plan, <laughs> which specifically uplifted the black community by increasing capital by almost $500 billion, creating 500,000 new black businesses, and would give black churches the ability to fight for federal resources for their communities. <laughs> And why are we acting like strong borders aren't a thing literally everywhere else in the world? Since when has being patriotic been a crime? See, a few weeks ago at the debate, Trump mentioned black jobs. And a lot of people got in an uproar as if they didn't know what he meant. Well, we go to the polls and cast our black vote. We go to the stores and spend our black dollar. We live in our black community, but for whatever reason, we draw the line at a black job. Oh, but wait, because if you're wondering what a black job is, please, I encourage you all to drive through Atlanta at all these beautiful black-owned businesses and check and see who works there. Probably a black person working for a black entrepreneur, recycling the black dollar, creating black generational wealth. All right, sorry. That was a good cleanup. <laughs> I didn't give that, but do we really believe that? Is that truly a black job? I don't know. I don't know. Let it, let it, let it keep going. They come here illegally and they're taking your jobs and your resources. Then please believe my cousins in the Appalachians. They coming for you too. And y'all know Kamala Harris has yet to say Lake and Riley's name. As borders are, she opened the border to millions of illegal immigrants that have flooded American streets with deadly drugs and gangs that have spiked overdoses by over 124% and brought more crime into commu uh, excuse me, minority communities. So how's that for black folks? But let's take race out of it. Just as a woman, period. How can you be a champion for women's rights when you're taking away opportunities from biological women and giving them to transgendered ones? All right, all right, all right. It's spicy. I'll wait, y'all, because I wasn't done. See, how can you promote equity for women and you're allowing men to play in women's sports? And what kind of feminist would still allow men to enter their sacred spaces, i.e. our bathrooms and school locker rooms? Do I even need to mention the opening ceremony at the Olympics? Angela Carini was forced to fight a man and told us that she's never oh, no. been punched so hard in her life. What? We cannot allow dangerous liberals who think things like this are okay into the White House because my daughter will not be fighting a man at her wrestling match. <laughs> and what I think both men and women can agree on is that national security is important. So who would y'all rather see lead us into war if it were so to happen? My silk press sister Kamala or the big dog Donald Trump? <laughs> and lastly, I cannot get up here without mentioning my farmers, the backbone of this country. And aside from the Biden-Harris administration hurting you guys in ways we can't even comprehend by the rising cry, uh, cost of everything, black farmers suffered even more due to the delays associated with the Inflation Reduction Act signed in 2022. Now, don't let the Biden-Harris administration fool you because they waited until the ninth hour to, dis uh, to sign off on disbursements as a last-minute attempt to garner support. But why would they hurt the agricultural industry? Probably because they're looking forward to making more money in the pharmaceutical one. Boy, and so speaking great. of pharmaceuticals, because I promise I'm going to wrap this up, when they bring up abortion and they talk about protecting your medical freedoms, don't be afraid to mention COVID. The Biden-Harris administration forced Americans to take an experimental vaccine 
and took away their jobs, their livelihoods, and their freedoms if they refused. That's true. That's very true. Trump gave us a choice, and Biden gave us a mandate. Hey, y'all, because I'm about to kill him with this one. So the next time the left wants to tell you that, hey, abortion is a right and you need to protect your medical freedoms, remember that they took those freedoms away from men and women the second they got in office, and there's nothing stopping them from doing it again. Clock it. So lastly, again, I'm going to encourage you all to vote based on the facts and not feelings. Oh, he made me feel so bad when he said that. Okay, but they hurt your families when they sent all your tax dollars overseas. Oh, it hurts my feelings when he acts like that. Okay, but it hurts all of us when you see an administration failing their country that they were elected to represent. In which case, I'm going to leave y'all with, hey, mama, daddy, I made it. And my baby girl, Amaya, is somewhere in here, so we can all say, hey, Amaya, in unison, because she's the real superstar, y'all. But I'm going to go ahead and let y'all get riled up and ready for Big T himself. Thank you guys for having me. I look forward to seeing you all. (laughs) Hey, Michaela, I know you spoke. Just come up for a second. Come here. This young woman, I walked into, I don't know what the hell restaurant it was, but I walked into this restaurant, and we do it very quietly. We don't announce, and that's for, you know, security reasons, everything. I walked in. She's behind the counter, and she didn't know I was coming. And she goes, it's President Trump. She looks at me, it's President Trump. You saved my college. And I said, how the hell do you know that? She said, you are... So, this one is so smart, so sharp. She sure. grabbed me. She gave me a kiss. I said, I think I'm never going back home to the first lady. <laughs> <laughs> you were supposed to keep that quiet. See, now, for the average politician, that's death. For me, I don't care. I just want to tell you, you are an unbelievable person with a great personality. You Thank lit you. up the whole room. You lit up the whole room. I said, Weeks later, I'd go, who is that person that was so incredible? She knew everything about me. She had no idea I was coming. She knew everything about me. And, you know, the historically black colleges and universities, I gave millions and millions, billions of dollars to. They kept coming back. And I said, why are you doing this? And we gave them long-term funding. And she knew that because she said her college, which was She loved her college. She said it was so great, right? You loved it. The illustrious CAU. Yeah, that's right. She loved her college, and she said, you saved my college. What was your college? Tell them. The illustrious Clark Atlanta University. And, And it was so impressive, and I felt so good, because she really did. She really said, I said, did you like the college? She said, no, I loved that school. I loved that college. And that's what it's all about. But you are an incredible person. I think you have a tremendous future. I really do. Awesome. And I'll do whatever I can to help you. Okay? Yeah. Thank, you. Me on the Thank you very Thank much. You. Great job. Thank you. you want to say something else? Man, no. you know, I thought I was done. <laughs> but I do want to add on to some of the remarks that were made by others, and we do need to do our best to get the message out there. The fight is nothing if all we do is talk about it amongst ourselves. So with that being said, since you said you'd help me, shameless plug, if y'all need anybody to knock doors, make phone calls, wave signs, get people out to the polls, call me at Conserve the Culture. Because not only do I mobilize the HBCU students so that they may get this message, but I'm the best person when it comes to black engagement in the black community. And nobody needs this message more than my folks. So if, do y'all care for real? Are y'all with us for real? I gotta give it to her. She can talk. I'm really impressed. Conserve culture.com for any and all inquiries. Y'all can follow me at Miss Kayla, baby. I'm going to give it back to Big T. Hey, 
I don't know how to feel about this, but I like her. She's I like her personality. Oh, last thing. And last thing, make sure you guys tune in to my podcast dropping soon on the Patriots Prayer Network. Thank you all. <laughs> she took advantage of that. I can give it to her. She's great. Thank you. Ha <laughs> but Kayla. But Kayla, you did that. I had to give it to her. That team brought somebody with energy, with flair. She's a sister. She's a strong sister. She's a leader. She's outspoken. Um, yeah, I mean, she's smart. My goodness. So kudos for Michaela. Uh, whatever you got covered, baby girl, I pray that uh, it is all you ever dreamed and more. Um, Trump team, all this political stuff about on either side. I just think that's all the same stuff. But just want to bring you guys um, just her 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 energy and what the <laughs> Republicans or Trump's team brought to combat Kamala Harris, which is man, they come out the gate swinging. So that young lady has a lot of good energy. So uh, I know some of her stuff was probably written for, but a lot of the stuff, you can just tell that she, it was just boom, 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 very sharp, very sharp. So, well, hey, comment below. I'm about to get up out of here. Like, subscribe uh, to the channel, and uh, just, just, just talk about this. What, you, what did you guys think? I, I'm not, on my side, I'm not picking anything. I just want to bring you to you guys what the Trump team brought. And I thought that her speech was really great. So, till next time, peace.